welcome or welcome back to my channel i am continuing the unpopular heart stopper opinion series but i'm gonna be doing this video revolved around season two because you guys seem to like the idea of me doing it i did do a video on this related to season one i'll put it up there or the link will be in my bio or something description that thing if you want to see that but i don't like really long intros so let's just get on with the video ben's character was important for season two thank god he's gone for season three though if you've watched my previous opinions video you will know that i agree with this i think that it wouldn't have made sense for ben's character to completely disappear after everything that he did as imogen said he's obsessed with charlie so it wouldn't make sense for him to just disappear now that he's got a boyfriend so i completely agree with that Charlie not accepting Ben's apology was so satisfying. I feel like that needs to be seen in media much more and also in real life because people always feel pressure to accept one's apology even when someone had done something terrible. Yes. I think that Charlie was 100% right for not accepting Ben's apology. Sometimes sorry can't fix everything, especially what Ben did. And I think it was important for Ben to know that what he did was wrong and it wasn't okay. And he knows that he messed up and it's good that Charlie didn't just let him off because now he's learnt the lesson of he can't do that stuff to people and he can't, you know, expect to just say sorry and be forgiven even if he has got a hard life, like it's just no excuse. So I 100% agree with that opinion. Regardless of the possible I love you shower scene in season three, why in the world would Charlie text Nick saying I love you? That just seems so, why would you first say that to someone over text? That just seems so out of character too. I was screaming at that scene. It was so annoying and then the screen just cut to black. I think season three is going to open with him erasing the text because I think that was the only way that they could do a cliffhanger without, you know, one of them saying it because I feel like if one of them said it, the other would say it back and there wouldn't be that much of a cliffhanger because, you know, these two characters love each other, it's obvious. So I don't think saying it would have been able to leave much of a cliffhanger so I think that's why they did the text thing but I don't think he's going to send the text because it's just, that's just not the way things go. Like you don't say it in text. Adding Darcy's home life in the series adaption was so crucial. It allowed Darcy to be taken seriously instead of the audience seeing her as a character who keeps the overall mood of the show cheerful. It gets the message across that we never know an individual's reality. I 100% agree. I think Darcy's home life showed that there's so much layers to different characters. Um, trying not to add the shrek meme in here bear with me it was so well played that she was just cheerful for the season and the last few episodes it sort of started to escalate and we saw a lot deeper into why darcy was the way she was because she can't be open at home and it made a lot of sense obviously those that have read the comics knew what her home life was but i think adding it in the show a lot more people are going to watch the show than read the comics it was really important to add some depth to darcy's character instead of her just being the uh, one that lightens the mood and says some funny things because life's not like that giving Towson more of a backstory was so important it makes his character make so much more sense i liked Tao a lot more this season because i understood him more and i think a lot of the viewers will agree with me on that there was a lot more reason as to why he was the way he was and it makes season one make more sense. I think Tao opening up about the loss of a parent as well is so important for that representation and to show someone who's going through a loss that things will be okay, you know? So I think Tao's storyline this season was really powerful and really crucial. Like people are like, oh, why did they include that? No, it was important because it's not just about Nick and Charlie. Every character should have a backstory and I completely agree with that. When Charlie said he doesn't want to be seen as a fragile, broken mess, that needs to be fixed. It's so, so important for people to hear, especially for his character. And Nick's reaction was perfectly done and made me feel so safe in the scene. I cried in that scene. My boyfriend literally had to hold me. I was like, no, no, here we go. I know what's going to happen. I was tearing up, it was that's why i didn't film my reaction to season two i was crying the entire time but the way nick reacted was so mature and i think young people seeing that reaction would show them how to help a friend or show them how to support someone going through it not necessarily being like stop that's stupid because that's not very understanding so i think Nick being really understanding is very crucial for people to see and I loved his reaction so much. It 
Ah, I bawled my eyes out. I don't love the idea of Sapphic Imogen just because I don't want them to overshadow Tara Darcy. I get where you're coming from in some ways, but at the same time, I think it's really important to have that WLW representation, even if it's like an unlabeled character. And I really love the idea of Imogen not having a label storyline this season and just seeing you know, feelings and how feelings progress regardless of labels and regardless of discovering yourself. Obviously that's a part of it, but I think it's really important to just see that things happen sometimes, even when you least expect them and where you least expect them. So I like the idea of Sapphic Imogen because it just, it gives a different community and a different way of discovering yourself some more representation. The scene where James tells Isaac you probably just haven't found the right person, although a bit annoying, is so crucial because it's so real. It's what people will always seem to tell you when the idea of a Oasis is brought up and I think Toby represented it in the series so well. I think the way that the series was scripted when it comes to the a Oasis storyline is so real and realistic and it's what people would say because the community doesn't have that much representation and I think that because they've shown people what not to say and how it would affect that person in the situation then it will decrease what's the word it will make it less taboo and not I hate that word I hate the word taboo I forgot what I was saying now I think Toby portrayed the role really well and I think the script was really well done and very realistic because it's just what happens and it's what people will say and I think people after seeing that and seeing how the way that you can say things can affect people figuring themselves out then they might be a little bit more careful with their words so I do like the fact that the younger generation is gonna have that representation and it's not gonna be as abnormal and it's going to just be like include like every other sexuality because it should be but it's not because a lot of people don't understand it but I think because it's being more understood and it's being more popularised it's going to be easier for AROAs people to figure themselves out and it's just going to be a normal process of figuring yourself out. I wish we got more of Charlie telling Harry off instead of just being like no and closing the door. I know we got that with Ben later on but it would have been nice to see a little bit more from Charlie. I think Charlie's confidence grew a lot this season and considering his, his anxiety I really wasn't expecting him to stand up for himself as much as he did so I think we might see a little bit more of that side in Charlie in season three maybe later on in the season considering what's going to happen don't want to think about that right now no we're not talking about that this is season two we're gonna ignore that that happens in the future I like the fact that Charlie was the one to say no and shut the door I pissed myself it just shows that an apology can't fix everything and i think that was a very good thing portrayed in season two because charlie didn't accept ben's apology and he told him and he didn't accept harry's apology and he made that known and i think it's okay to make it known that you don't accept the apology and you don't easily just forgive and forget something like that because ben and harry made charlie's life hell and I think it's perfectly valid for him to make that known to them, regardless of how bad it makes them feel, because maybe then they'll understand and they won't do it to anyone else. I actually liked the storyline with Ben in season two. I think it was handled very well. And although I didn't particularly want him in season two, I think it was done very well. And the symbolism of him walking away from the rainbow wave was incredible. That was so powerful. Nothing was said, but you could see the representation of it and I think it was handled amazingly because they didn't necessarily give him a big realisation or redemption storyline. Good. He doesn't deserve a redemption storyline, but they did give him a little bit of a background on what was going on in his head and I really liked the way that they portrayed it because it wasn't a big thing. They didn't make him a main character because he doesn't deserve that. But they did put it in insight what was going on and what he was thinking. So I think they did that very, very well. The talk of consent between the two lovers, even if it was short, was so very impactful and extremely important, specifically for the younger members of the LGBT. That scene shows that even if you are in a relationship, that doesn't necessarily mean consent because that it, a relationship is where a lot of sexual assault happens and because you're in a relationship, you don't really realise it or you know, but you feel like you can't say anything because they might take it the wrong way. So I think 
The way consent was portrayed this season was so impactful and so important to show the younger generation and it'll just make asking for consent a normal thing and it should be a normal thing but I think a lot of people especially younger people think it's awkward like is this okay but it should be normal it should be included in every situation and I think the way that they portrayed it and the way they didn't make it a big deal they just made it normal they portrayed it perfectly I can't count the amount of times I forgot they were acting because the acting was just incredible. All of the serious topics were acted out amazingly. Several times it was like they lifted the pages from the comics and put it on the screen. It was incredible. They definitely made it so like the comics and they didn't take the originality of the story away. And I really liked that, especially the recharging scene. We, put, we got the recharging scene. It makes me so happy. I need to rewatch season two now. <laughs> I wish the rest of the Paris squad would have noticed Isaac being upset when he found out about asexuality and found out that he is asexual. They could have been there for him to support and be happy for him that he figured it out, but they really didn't pay attention. I really wish they would have been more supportive, but I think it just makes the show more realistic because when you were going through that, no one really notices even if it might be a big thing for you and especially with the taboo subject of asexuality and aerowaste it should be spoken about more i think they portrayed it perfectly because british teenagers are gonna act that way that was a bit loud british teenagers are gonna act that way and they're gonna be a little bit ignorant and they're gonna be a little bit you know involved in themselves and distracted especially when a friend's going through something so i think it just represented it very good at how people would react especially the lines and the way that it was portrayed and written in the script but i do wish that isaac had a little bit more support considering he has a whole friend group that are lgbt that should be a safe place to speak to them about it but i think because isaac doesn't really talk a lot he just sits in the corner reading icon same i wish that he felt a lot more comfortable with them but i did like when he lashed out because i feel like now they'll take him seriously and listen to him and sort of you know react a little bit better and think about what they're doing and james telling isaac that he hadn't met the right person gave me the ick i cringed at the scene but it's so realistic and it's so important because that's what people usually say when you open up about you know, not experiencing the feelings that a lot of other people feel. As I've said multiple times in this video, it made it realistic and it made it so that that's how it would actually be. That is what some people say to you. And I think they portrayed it perfectly, but at the same time, I do wish people would stop saying that. It's so annoying. If Imogen and Sahara have developed into a romantic relationship in season three, I don't think they'll get the screen time I think they deserve since they're not main characters the way Nick, Charlie, Tell, L, Isaac and Tara and Darcy are. I think it might be a little bit of a backstory considering the whole theme of season three is probably going to be Charlie's mental health but it'll be nice to see it on the sidelines. They need a main unlabeled character to represent that community because uh, all of the characters have labels. You don't necessarily need a label to love someone. And I think they need to include that in season three. So I hope they get more screen time and I hope that, you know, the unlabeled community gets more representation in season three. And I really want them to keep Imogen unlabeled. Like that is really important for a lot of people. I thought that season two was amazing, especially the end scene with Nick and Charlie, because as I'm sure it did with many, it made me feel seen. The acting was so amazing and the scene was just so, so beautiful. That scene was beautifully written and it was very well portrayed by Joe and Kit. I think they did amazing with that scene. You can see the like genuine emotions in it and they've their acting's developed so much since season one and it was already amazing, but that scene, it crumbled my heart into pieces. I sobbed so much <laughs> and I will probably continue to cry about it every time I watch it or every time I think about it. I'm tearing up thinking about it. It really gave the representation on how to react to that stuff. My boys. <laughs> so that is all of the opinions I'm going to be reading in this video. Thank you so much for replying to my tweet if you did. If you didn't get a chance to put your opinion in this video, I probably will be doing another one and continue this series just like I did with season one. If you haven't watched those videos and you want to, they will be on my channel not too far down. 
If you haven't watched season two yet, I definitely recommend it. Obviously there's been some spoilers in this video. This is your sign to go watch season two for the first time or re-watch season two, because that's exactly what I'm gonna do while I'm editing this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe or don't, I don't care. This is just a little bit of fun. If you want to be friends, because I have none, my socials are in my channel description and they'll probably be in the description of this video. So don't hesitate to drop me a message. Little disclaimer, opinions are opinions. If you don't agree with people, don't go off, okay? Just calm down. It's all okay. Different opinions shape the world. That's how things work. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.